ay uh, isa sa mga nagsagawa ng pananaliksik tungkol sa droga at mga kabataan na pinag-usapan sa Ateneo School of Government nung lunes. Siya po ay isang non-resident research fellow ng Ateneo School of Government. So, if we're to talk about our youth today, especially dun sa mga nahuhuli, uh, sabi, wala naman talagang istambay, pero Ano po ba talaga ang ipinatutupad ng Philippine National Police ngayon? Please. Yun nga po, ang gusto kong liwanagin ay ang sinasabing tambay na word is not a criminal offense. Wala naman po kaming direktiba na manghuli ng tambay. Ang aming direktiba ay to enforce the law, especially yung tinatawag nating local ordinances pertaining to discipline. Sometimes I call it discipline crimes. So in Quezon City, if you walk around half naked, you'll be arrested. If you uh, do some cat calling with a beautiful woman, you'll be arrested also in 5,000. If you drink in public, you'll be arrested. So what we are enforcing are what we call discipline, to enforce the discipline in the city. Because people have the right to go home to their homes, na feeling safe sila. Eh sometimes pag makakasalubong ka ng kahubad, mami, may panaksak sa likod dyan eh. O kaya nagiinuman dyan, taladala nila yung meso nila sa kalsada. So, parang ano yan, may chaos. So, ang, ang ginagarantiyan lang ng kapulisan natin is, is uh, everybody's uh, safety. So, kaya nag i kami ng local ordinances aside from our main job, which is the war on drugs. So, sa war on drugs, talagang we will not stop until the last poser and user in the barangay. And also, we have increased anti-criminality, yung tinatawag natin a focus crime. So, all of these are happening at the same time. Would you say that most of the crimes committed against persons and against property ay may kinalaman o naguugat sa droga? Hindi lang sa ano, yung, yung statistics from uh, July 1, 2016 up to the present, it was found out on, in NCR on, on, on a national level, it's about, uh, nag-decreased ng about uh, 49% and most of, ha more than half of them, yung decrease na to attributed to tinatawag natin drug-related. Yeah, sometimes I'm investigating uh, stabbing, pinasok sa bahay, 19 times, sinaksak, nurse, langong-langong sa droga, meron namang uh, nang ho-hold up, 15 times, sunod-sunod sa isang oras, wala rin pang bili ng droga. So, uh, ang impact ng war on drugs natin sa Queso City uh, is na-reduce yung, na yung uh, index crime eh, ng mga drug-related. So, malaki, malaki talaga ang impact. And now, ang aming concentration on discipline naman. But the war on drugs still continues. Okay. Mula sa kabilang panic sa Ateneo de Manila University, sa School of Government, what have you found so far? Anong koneksyon ng krimen sa droga at sa mga kabataan nating naliligaw umano ng landas? Uh, yung study namin is actually uh, about uh, the killings related to the anti-drugs campaign. So we didn't specifically uh, point to kung kabataan ba yung nagiging biktima, but on the average, the victims are 41 years old. So definitely out of the youth range. No? But siguro, can I say a personal uh, view on this? No? Kasi as a constitutionalist, I look at this through the lens of the Constitution. No? So we're talking about the youth. We're talking about our youth. And uh, it bears to mention that right now, uh, our population, about 40%, uh, how the youth should be treated, this should be the guiding policy. So I guess what I'm trying to say is we have to be careful with how we categorize our youth as tambays or loiterers or as uh, petty criminals. Because that, that can be uh, a stigma on them and could uh, diminish their chances at having a fulfilled, fulfilling life. So from the constitutionalist point of view, that's what I want to uh, bring out on the table. Okay. Now what about the findings that you've had? Dun sa study namin, uh, 
the the data set the, there are patterns in the data set that show the majority of the killings around 50% of the killings 55% uh, of the killings occur in metro manila uh, no, no, no. That's uh, close to 40% pala, but 55% of the killings occur in poor communities. In poor communities. Yes. So necessarily, most of the victims, if not all of the victims, are poor, poor Filipinos. Ah, okay. So that's just one aspect. No? So right. there are still, yung in uh, the killings in uh, NCR, majority are in Quezon City, in Manila, in Caloocan. So, ito yung mga patterns that we've uh, studied. And I invite you to visit our website. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the name is drugsarchive.org or .com. Mm -hmm. that a, that .ph. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, everything is there. All okay. the information is there, available to everybody. All right. Um, we're joined by the Secretary General of Salilahi Alliance for Children's Concern, si Yuli Rico Bonganay. Welcome to Wednesday Roundtable at Lido. Anong datos ang dala ng inyong uh, grupo? Ano yung pananaw ninyo sa nagaganap ngayon, lalo pa at may mga kabataan na nadarakip at iba pa? Um, sa bahagi na... Yes, please. Sa bahagi ng saling lahi bilang child rights advocates, no? Lang, um, lang, kami lang. lubos na nababahala. No? May apprehension kami dito sa panibagong order ni President Duterte to um, rescue. Pero sa actual kasi, yung nangyayari ay to arrest, no? Yung nangyayari na yung mga bata ay kukunin at ilalagay sa mga, take into custody ng mga police, no? Sa kalagayan kasi na ngayon na napakababa ng mga bahay pag-asa natin. So sa kalagayan na napakababa ng mga facilities um, operated by DSWD, uh, nangangamba kami na sa kulungan babagsak yung mga bata. No? Napakalaki rin ng usapin ng capacity ng um, mga authorities who will implement the um, anti-tambay which will cover also the children. No? Sa ngayon, may mga cases tayo natatanggap na yung mga bata na nire-rescue supposedly ay um, na sa subject no, sa iba't ibang forma ng violations. No? May mga pagmamalupit, may mga cases ng pang-aabuso at ito ay um, perpetrated no, by authorities who are supposedly um, um, duty-bound no, dun sa pag-protect ng rights ng children. No? Mm -hmm. Sa ngayon, edi tingin natin ang lubos na maapektuhan nung um, pa panibagong panukala ay yung mula doon sa may hirap ng mga pamilya, no? Particularly yung mga um, street families, no? Ang um, sa bahagi naman natin, kinikilala natin no yung um, responsibilidad ng gobyerno to um, ensure yung welfare ng mga bata, no? Dahil signatory siya doon sa UNCRC primary duty bearer siya. Pero sa isang banda, kung magpapatupad tayo ng mga programa para sa mga bata, dapat laging primary consideration natin yung best interest nila. No? Okay. Were you able to document yung mga sinasabi ng mga pag-abuso at uh, pananakit sa mga kabataan? Um, during, uh, actually, yung may mga member organizations kami who are documenting cases ng war on drugs. No? Um, sa cases ng Children's Rehabilitation Center, there are, there, there are 44 children who were killed um, sa ilalim ng war on drugs policy ng Duterte Admin. No? Yung, isang member na, uh, yung isang network din namin, around 74 children na yung kanilang na-document. No, yung mga bata ito no sa implementation to na anti-criminality program ng Duterte administration. Kaya may apprehension kami na itong panibagong panukala ay magre-result sa mga pang-aabuso no. Mm -hmm. Oo. Uh, may mga cases din na yung mga bata na supposedly nire-rescue um, yung clearing operation nila sa mga kalsada o sa mga kali nilalagak nila imbis na diretso sa mga facility ng DSWD sa mga kulungan dahil wala okay. naman tayong pasilidad para sa kanila. Thank you very much. How is it on the ground, uh, Chief Superintendent uh, Esquivel? Thank you for giving the opportunity to explain. First and foremost, I'd like to address the issue on the youth. Kailangan natin protection ng youth, which is our marching order. Not, no less than the president that uh, we should protect the youth if, if, if you do something to the youth that's why we're doing war on drugs pinay-preserve natin yung kabataan natin na pag-asa ng bayan that's why we're doing all these things second 
ginijailed yung uh, kabataan, ang uh, police, hindi, hindi actually nagkukulong ng bata, bawal yun eh. Ang tawag nga namin dyan, children in conflict with the law, na ginagamit ng mga criminal minds, na ginagawang spearhead, let's say, siya pagdadalang droga. We cannot do anything. Minor siya, hindi naman pwedeng kasuhan. Ikalawa, ang tawag niyan, children at risk in the streets. So if you join our police operation, I invite you to join our operation to, to see for yourself what is happening. Pagka nahuli namin ngayong gabi yan, po-process yan sa DSWD and, and everything. Tapos uh, after a day, babalik na naman kami to the same spot. I, I, I can say, say uh, specific sa Munoz o sa Baldock. Ado na naman sila. What do we do? I-rescue na naman namin yan. Ipo-process na naman yan. Kaya one time, we, we thought about, paano ba gagawin natin dito? Gabi-gabi natin i-rescue, the same situation. Ang ginawa namin, dinimanda namin yung, ano, yung, na, yung magulang. Bakit nyo pinapabayaan yung mga anak nyo nasa kalsada? I-dinimanda namin, napain sila ng 2,000 yata under the Quezon City Ordinance na ang fine ng magulang. Negligence yan eh. Bakit mo pinababayang nasa kalsada yung anak mo, nangihingi ni Lumos and everything. Ang problema namin, wala rin pamiyasa yung magulang, lumobo na naman yung aming kulungan. So, pare-pareho naman tayo ng adhikain dito eh. So yung sinasabi naman is yung poor. Bakit pro-poor? Sa totoo lang, when we enforce the law, sinumpaan namin yan. It's blind. Bulag yan. Kahit sino nandiyan na nagbabayalay to batas, a policeman is duty-bound to enforce the law. Hindi sinasabi ang mayaman ka, hindi sinasabing mahirap ka. Because what we are trying to deliver is a feeling of safety sa community. And even though na ginagawa namin yan, binabatikos kami, but we put our badge, our career on the line daily. Even though na maraming mga batikos, we are trying to deliver a safe community as by mandated by, by our oath. Mm -hmm. So pag may nagbabiolate na batas, hindi naman namin tinitignan yan na ano eh na kung mayaman o mahirap eh. Ang tinitignan namin dyan yung elements of the crime. At doon naman sinasabi nyo na may abuses ng uh, nangyayari sa kabataan. Go to our policemen, we will investigate it. We do not condone any acts of abuses by the policemen, especially kung sa Quezon City. Dalhin mo sa akin at siguradong maimbestigahin niya, ma-dismiss yan. The full force of the disciplinary machinery of the PMP will, apply, will be applied. So at this point, I would like to clarify. Okay. Magat Thank you very much. Now, uh, Ilipat natin sa ibang dimension yung discussion sapagkat I came across uh, something which will be released by a multilateral. Ang sabi, karamihan ng mga bata pumapasok sa paaralan at age 6. Subalit, 80% lamang sa mga primary students na nakakatapos ng 6th grade. Sa secondary level, only one-third of the Filipino children start junior high school on time and one-third of those who drop out before reaching 10th grade. Students who drop out of primary or secondary school are often unable to obtain further formal education or vocational training, and many go on to work in unskilled occupations that offer low wages and little job security. Would you say this is happening? Actually, sa nilabas na ngayong ika-second year ni President Duterte, naglabas yung saling lahi ng isang um, document, no? Kaugnayin din sa current situation ng mga bata sa ngayon. Sa ngayon, may 4 million children um, na out of school youth, no? Primarily po ngayon, no, syempre yung kahirapan, no? Poverty-driven. And most of them are engaged into labor, no? Or yung child labor na tinatawag. Sa bahagi natin, mo... Um, na alarming yung ganung ano no yung ganung trend no napapataas um, sa isang daan na batang pumapasok sa mga paaralan pa paunti nang paunti sila hanggang sa sa data nga natin pito lamang sa isang daan papasok ng elementarya pito lamang ang mga graduate ng high school habang 14 yung mga katapos ng mga vocational courses while the rest of those children do sa 100 na yon ay um, talagang hihinto sa pag-aaral dahil doon sa kahirapan. No? Ang sinasabi natin, um, yung, pag, pag, yung holistic development ng bata, responsibilidad yan ng ano, eh, buong lipunan. No? So, um, primarily, may um, responsibility yung state no? to ensure, ensure yung mga um, pagbibigay na oportunidad sa kanila para matamasa nila yung kanilang mga karapatan. So, um, Dun sa, lalo na dun sa K-12 program ng government sa ngayon, marami dun sa mga senior high schools ay around 1 million yung estimated number namin na um, huminto dahil dun sa K-12 program, dahil dun sa additional 2 years. Okay. Tapos, um, 4 out of 5 um, companies ngayon ay hindi tatanggap ng mga K-12 graduates. No? So, um, nababahala kami dahil anong kinabukasan yung nag-iintay dun sa mga kabataan natin. Kung papalaki yung mga... Um, 
bilang ng mga batang huminto sa pag-aaral. That's what I heard from are, parents, no? They are very prone no, dun sa uh-huh. pa-engage nila, dun sa um, criminality and anti-social activities, kung ganun yung mangyayari. No? Okay. Yeah. May narinig ako mga magulang, makatapos nga ika ng K-12, hindi naman kukunin. Oo. Dahil sa, meron ka mga college graduates eh. Yes. Bakit namin kukunin yan? Eh, bagito yan. Parang okay. ganun. Kahit nga ka- mga college graduate ngayon eh, ang hirap makaharap ng trabaho, eh di lalo pa kaya, sinasabi kasi ng, um, actually naglabas yung Philippine Chamber of Commerce ng isang um, uh, kanilang position na yung 4 out of 5 companies ay hindi tatanggap dahil may, yung mga K-12 graduates ay kulang pa ng oras dun sa usapin ng training. No? Okay. May, may pangailangan para additional training para sa kanila. All right, Very well. What have you to say about this, Attorney? Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Police Chief Superintendent S. Givel for, for really clarifying. No? Kasi he was very emotional and that's very and I appreciate that. Because uh, we're unfairly burdening the police to solve a social problem. You, you enumerated exactly what the social problem is with regards to our youth. And all the blame is going to the police. That's unfair. They have a specific job to do is, and to keep us, to protect us from harm, from criminals. But still, there is a social problem that we are not talking about. And we, co- we keep on blaming the government, the DepEd, the president, which is unfair because as uh, my good friend here said, this is a community problem. And again, I want to mention the specific uh, constitutional provision. It says the state, and please let, let us not mistake the state for the government because we also belong to the state. You and I, we belong to the state. So we, we have to look for solutions together. That was the purpose of the study that we made. We have to look for solutions together for the problems that we have, not for the problems we are facing. And let us not put blame where, do, where, do they, where they don't belong. Okay, very well. Doon po sa napoprofile ninyo, Chief Superintendent Esquivel, what have you found out? Doon sa mga bata na parang recalcitrant, nahuli nyo kagabi, mahuli nyo naman mamaya, ano yung profile nila? Magugulat ka nga eh, parang a majority nung nahuhuli namin yung aming nire-rescue na children, eh, yung nanay, misan yung nanay tatay nakakulong dahil sa droga. Yung iba naman, uh, broken family. Pero yun nga, ang, ang, ang nakikita namin dito, kaya nga nung bandang huli na ganun ng ganun, ang dinimanda na namin yung magulang for negligence. So na-find out namin, wala lang trabaho yung magulang o kaya ay yung nanay nakakulong. So sabi natin, paano natin so-solve yun to? Pag hinuli natin bata, gabi-gabi, ibabalik natin sa DSWD. We try na yung magulang para, para asikasuhin nila. Kaya y- yung youth na sinasabi natin, ang primary responsible dyan, the family. Yung nanay, tatay. And by and large, yung community. Yung police, yung teacher, and everything. Paano pag doon pa lang sa family, eh, basag na, ika nga. So, doon kami nahihirapan. So, anyway, uh, patuloy yung aming PCR, yung pagpapaliwanag, na pag minsan pag mahuhuli namin, ang anak eh, more than they can afford to raise. Minsan, lima, anim, walo, eh obviously wala namang trabaho. So, yeah. so, yun yung mga nai-encounter namin. Pero ganun pa rin, tuloy-tuloy pa rin kami, gabi-gabi rescue, gabi-gabi. Pag minsan, pagka po pwede naman talaga yung magulang, eh talaga negligence lang, talaga ang dinidimanda namin. Pag naman talagang medyo sa kahirapan din, pinapakiusapan namin ng ways and means na papapano nila na maaruga yung kanilang mga ano. Kaya yung mga usually babae yung pinag-handle namin. Eh. Uh-huh. And, and makikita mo rin, yung bata rin doon pala, kaya malabas ng bahay, may violence against women and children din pala. May problema rin ganun. Kaya nadadagdagan, nadadagdagan yung aming tinatrabaho. Naku. Reaction, please, before we open the floor to our colleagues from the media. Um, kaugnay nung ano, no, yung profile, no? Um, yung DSW, naglabas, naglabas sila ng profile ng mga um, juvenile offender, no? Yung mga bata. Pangkaraniwang profile ng mga batang juvenile offender, galing sa mahihirap na pamilya, mababa yung um, um, edukasyon na nakuha o huminto sa pag-aaral, galing sa komunidad na may mataas na krimen. Yung, dahil ganun yung profile nila, primary, and most of the crimes committed by children are petty crimes. No? So makikita natin na may kaugnayan, may relation yung involvement ng children sa poverty. And 
with this, ang napangangailangan natin, hindi lang yung simpleng pag, um, law enforcement to eh. Hindi lang simpleng law enforcement ito. Nang, uh, nangangailangan siya ng comprehensive program mula sa primarily initiated by the government to address the roots of the um, engagement of or involvement of children into criminality. Have you noticed kung karamihan sa mga batang ito ay anak na mga migrante mula sa mga lalawigan na nanirahan na sa urban areas or urban slums, if you may? Actually, meron ding mga ganong cases dahil yung mga from provinces na punta sila rito and mostly nasa mga urban poor communities sila na napakababa nung... Um, Um, kabuhayan, walang trabaho, or kuminsan man, napakariit ng sweldo, no? Children are in a very miserable condition that they have to engage into criminality or antisocial activity in order to survive, no? Nandun sa kalagay na yung kanilang pamilya, mahirap, gutom, dahil kailangan nila mag-survive, um, either magtrabaho sila, ma-engage sila sa prostitution, ma-engage sila sa um, criminality para mabuhay. But, to arrest them or to um, um, hulihin sila ay hindi yun solusyon. Ang sinasabi natin, magbuo ng programa, tama po, uh, malaking problema na yan, huhulihin mo ngayon, kinabukasan nandun ulit. Dahil walang, ano, walang, walang maayos sa programa, I, dahil walang mga pasilidad, um, hindi rin naman pwedeng i-take into custody, ilagay ng mga polis sa kulungan, i-release -re yan. Okay. Uh, Isa pang bagay, meron ba kayong nakita ng mga matatagumpay na local government units na may programa to address all these concerns? Actually, yung, um, kung, for example, yung pagtatayo ng mga bahay pag-asa, Davao meron isa sa mga classic example natin kaugnay ng pagbubuo ng program for children para pag-address doon sa mga Um, pag-address doon sa mga bata nagkakasala sa batas. Isa okay. yung bahay pag-asa sa Davao. Maganda yon Dapat may, may sapat na bahay pag-asa. Sa buong Pilipinas, almost 30 lamang yung bahay pag-asa na meron tayo. Iba pang usapin kung may programa yan o maayos yung kanilang program. Napakalaki ng bag backlogs natin kaugnay ng mga social worker. Napakalaki ng pangailangan para sa budget para fully ma-implement yung RE9344 So holistic yung ano no approach dapat at yun nga hindi lang naman natin sinisisi sa kapulisan though kailangan din may address sa bahagi ng uh, Philippine National Police kaugnay nun sa pagtataas ng antas ng capacity ng mga um, authorities natin para to handle children. Okay. Napakaganda nun. Would you care to react, uh, Chief Superintendent? Meron Skel? po kaming special unit talaga nag-handle ng uh, youth or ng uh, minors, yung uh, Women Children Protection Desk namin. So, sila talaga specifically well-trained ito sa pag-handle lalo na yung mga violence against women, kung paano pag-proseso. Actually, ang hindi namin tinatawag na term na huli kasi minor eh. Ang tawag namin dyan, rescue nire-rescue namin yan gabi-gabi and gabi-gabi nasusunod yung proseso. So yun nga ang nakikita natin dito na para bang paulit-ulit, I agree with you uh, re-rescue namin tonight, three days later, i-rescue namin Kilala na nung mga bata yung social workers na kasama nyo eh, kaya oh. tumatakbo na lang eh Oo, oh, minsan dimidikit pa lang kami tumatakbo na. At this point gusto rin namin i-remind yung public pag may nakita kayong bata sa, sa kalsada Uh, na, na, naglilimos. Naglalabas ng pera, naglilimos. Para bang dapat bigyan ng limos yun, no? Pero parang mali yun eh. Lalong na-encourage, lalo yung dumadami yung re-rescuehin namin sa kalsada. Kaya kung gusto mo nyo mang magbigay, etiisin nyo na lang para, para, para hindi lucrative yung mag-standby sila sa kalsada at umuwi sila. Okay. Napakaganda nun. Uh, yung bang Ateneo School of Government, meron ba kayong branch or section na mag-aaral o magsusuri ng mga ordinansa sa iba't ibang local government units. You know, we invited the DILG to sit with us because uh, it is my belief that the DILG should know what's going on sa iba't ibang local government units because they have a bureau, local government supervision. So we will see kung ilan yung mga lugar na mayroong ordinansa na patutupad naman ng polis. Uh, Uh, the paper that I wrote together with Dean Ron and uh, Mr. J.V. Gamboa, we tackled the role of local government units or local government executives, particularly mayor and barangay captains, in the anti-drugs campaign. So we laid out there the legal framework uh, outlining their responsibility for keeping the community safe. So, una-una, ang pinaka-basis namin is the local government code. The local government code specifically mandates local governments to protect, 
the community. Keep them safe, keep them comfortable, protect the uh, properties within the territorial jurisdiction, and most of all, protect their lives. So the lives of their citizens. And uh, to be specific, this is called the General Welfare Clause. So all local government units, all, all local government officials are mandated by the local government code to protect their community, to protect the lives of the members of their community, and, what do I, and uh, to implement measures, programs, kagaya ng ginawa sa Davao, for example, that protect their youth. So this is a mandate by law. Okay. This may be classified, you may refuse to answer. You were once with the intelligence community. But we heard that there are local government officials who are behind illegal drugs and other illegal activities. Would you care to tell us if we really have that kind of information? In, 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 I can answer only in Quezon City. Okay, please. So we have some uh, reports that we, uh, allegation that certain, uh, but b very minimal in Quezon City to the level only of probably um, not the high position. But we are looking at it and uh, sa, sa, sa level ng uh, war on drugs natin, wala naman sinisino. Eh. Basta once you are reported and we will build up a case against you, kahit na ang position mo ay ano sa gobyerno you will be subjected for positive police action yeah because the, the president has said meron local government officials na involved sa drugs pero we still have to see the list kaya nagtatanong ako dahil you were once with the intelligence community baka pwede kang magtip sa amin kung meron talaga <laughs> meron naman ni release naman ng presidente yun di ba pero wala, wala details eh wala details uh, that, uh, yung details naman no na do sa screening body na nag-release noon kami naman sa police eh nagbi-build up kami ng evidence ah, okay. uh, because there are certain levels of information eh so mm -hmm. sometimes may isang may isang source na information kailangan mo ng second kailangan mo ng third yeah. sometimes it is term uh, confirmed sometimes it is validated pag sinabing uh, validated na meron nang nagtestify pag mm -hmm. may nagtestify na for police action ayon ah, very good we'd like to open the floor to our colleagues from the media uh, let me acknowledge the president of uh, the foreign correspondents association of the philippines my president jam go ahead with your questions <laughs> Chief, uh, sir, um, there's been mention of um, some local jails, basically, that may have had to, um, well, basically, um, put in jail minors. No? Do you have a number of those currently? Um, when you round them up, sorry, okay, let me rephrase it. There have been concerns about minors being put to jail, which is really a violation of the Constitution, if we look at it entirely. But in the process, because you said of the magnitude of those arrests or rescues, how long in average do they stay in detention? Or in police custody? Oh, custody, detention. So, uh, sa, sa ano ka talaga, meron yes. kami sa Quezon City and, and sa general instructions sa police, hindi naman kinukulong ang minor. Okay. So, pagdalin man yan sa istasyon, ang tawag nga namin dyan, rescue. So, merong special place tayo sa police station, yung Women's Children Protection Desk, kulay pink nga yung mga room nun eh. Doon sila pinaprocess. Kung mapuno naman yun, pag madami, sa lobby namin. But they are not being jailed, they are not being handcuffed. Because we treat them as victim, they are not criminals. Basta minor, 18 and below, minor yan. Do you accept a certain, do you accept the belief that there is a crisis when it comes to humanitarian conditions in, you know, in jails, in cells, in local police stations because of now the magnitude of this operation? Because this is, it's too prone the issue. It's basically the rounding up in itself, which many see as a, an attack on a particular class. But at the same time, the kind of treatment that they get once they're put in jail, as you know, the death of um, um, one of the inmates yes, last week raised concerns about the conditions within the cells. Yun nga, at talagang given na yun, uh, nung mag-start kami ng war on drug, talagang na-congest na yung aming mga, ang tawag doon ay custodial facilities. It's not actually a detention. It is, you are placed there while, while undergoing investigation. So may war, may war on drugs na kami, may increase anti-criminality pa kami, and now we have this uh, campaign on uh, uh, 
local ordinances uh, pertaining to discipline. Uh, so we call it discipline crime. So you can imagine in one of my police stations, a five meters by five meters, which is a local standard of good for 40 inmates, would be around 120. So that's about 300% uh, ang congestion niya. Yung pag ginamit mo pa yung international standard, 4.7 square meters, dapat anim lang nakakulong doon. So given na yan, pag naaresto kayo ng police, talagang ang mapapasokan nyo is a congested uh, custodial facility. So, but from the police side of it, eh, talaga nang hindi naman namin pwedeng, we cannot back down from our mandate, which is to enforce the law. So talagang may mga aresto. Pero kahit na congested siya, we're trying to resolve it. Kaya yung aming mga medical personnel nagkakandak ng uh, check-up every Friday. And then uh, tinitignan din yung, yung mental health nila. Kasi biruin mo, ah, uh, 18 inches, if I move close to him by, let's say, this, this much, it's already an attack on his uh, no, personal space. And you will be irritated. Imagining placing six people, eight people in one square meter, there is bound to be conflict in the custodial facility. So kailangan, tinitrain din namin yung police namin na uh, i-break i -break up yung mga gang-gang. Kasi kay, pag nasa loob ka ng ganyan sitwasyon, kailangan mo ng kampi-kampi, di ba? Kakampi-kampi kayo. So there, 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 is bound, there is bound to be friction. So even though na nakaka-friction, eh, pag yung police namin, hindi na prevent yung away-away na yan dyan sa jail, eh, nare-relief sila, na-investigan sila. Do you accept all the other concerns as well that there's not enough um, uh, basic facility? You know, the trains are really subhuman conditions. I would say because one, 128 in my, one of my jail, 128 person, at 40 square meter, one, one toilet bowl. Everybody has to use it. Somebody might say it's subhuman, but it's the only facility we have. So sometimes, nilalabas namin unti-unti, yung pinagagamit din namin yung CR namin. Even din, so yung CR namin, dalawa lang. So I even suggested to my uh, jailers, to my station commanders, na maybe uh, due to the recommendation of our health officer, na once in a week, ilalabas sila sa araw para maglakad-lakad. Yung palang, kasi if you are there in, in that condition, in less than a week, you will have several boils already in your body and you will have skin diseases sa balat mo at saka may boil. So ang, ang sabi sa akin ng doktor, the cause of that is uh, yung not enough movement. Hindi ka nagpapawis. So, of course, pag ilalabas mo yung 100 that, that is a security nightmare. So sabi ko, palima-lima lang, <laughs> labas-labas nyo para maarawan so that kahit paano malibig yung condition nila. So you accept that the situations in those facilities are inhumane? and are not really at all in compliance to uh, local or own national and international laws? I would say it would be situational. Kasi meron din naman kaming jail na hindi naman congested. Saan po yun, sir? Uh, I think yung aking uh, Eastwood ko, konti lang nakakulong doon. Kasi mga... Ha, <laughs> so, sasabihin ko, ay, siyempre, let's say, let's go to Kamigin, to Sikihor. Probably, malaki jail doon, dalawa tatlo. So, I cannot say that it's inhumane. I would say the congestion would be situational depending on the levels of police action being implemented uh, in a particular area. Sir, my very last question. There's no question about the loyalty of the police when it comes to what the president orders. And even sometimes he doesn't have to release an executive order. He just has to say it in his speech and you will implement it right away. There have been questions as to whether Processes have been followed. Kung baga, in, sinabi pa lang yung sa speech niya, right the way you implement it. Now, is standby part of that? You know, I, 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 okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. My last question would be, <laughs> if you see that the situation may no longer be acceptable for your standards and for the people, do you not bring it up to the president and say, I'm sorry, sir, we follow you, you know, our loyalties to you, but this is no longer sustainable. This is causing a major uh, societal crisis, basically. Is it something that you, as a police force, is ready to say to the president, sorry, hindi namin pwedeng implement ng ganito, ganito lang. Walang planning to, kulang ng implementation. We don't have the right resources, and we don't have the right support from other agencies. I'd like to answer the first point you raised, which is about loyalty. We are men in the profession of arms. I was formerly a military, now I'm a policeman. It is uh, given to us that what we call commander's intent. Pag sinabi ng commander, ganito ang direction namin, it does not need explanation. We follow. 
as a professional soldier, now as a professional policeman, my, our, our uh, first order of the day is to obey. To the second question is, we have our out of office. What is given for us is to enforce the law. We do not uh, think of its political implication. We do not think of its uh, implication to the local government. Within the bounds of Because the we implement the law blindly. Kahit mayamang ka, mahirap ka, nag-violate ka ng batas, nag no left turn ka, titikitang ka. Yun ang mandate ng pulis eh. Hindi kami, hindi kami tumitingin ng race, kulay, religion. That is our mandate. Once na tumitingin ka na dyan, medyo baka marilip ka na or you will lose your you, 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 deep in, within you, you, you your mm. out of office. Sir, yung second question, sorry, yung, yung, do you, I mean, have you already told the president that this is not sustainable? We have a level of subcommand, di ba? Okay. Meron pa yeah. level, level of command eh. And the, the, the moment the order is given, that's it. That's it. We obey. As to the outcome of the implementation of the order, that it's upon the decision makers. Okay. It's the, upon the highest commander. Dagdagan natin yung issue. Doon po sa binanggit nyo, hindi ba isang indictment na yon sa local government ng Quezon City na hindi naayos ang police station samantalang magaganda yung barangay hall? Actually, ongoing ang repair ng, ng aming police station. I think they allotted between 3 million to 5 million per police station. Yung mga jail, yung custodial facilities namin is including dun sa repair na ginagawa of all my 12 police stations and even my district headquarters uh, compared to other uh, other uh, other districts. So ongoing. I cannot say na... So it's work na, in progress. It's a work. If you go to my police station, it's... Uh, it's uh, most, 90% under repair. Ah, okay. It Very is funded good. by the local government. Really? So, wala ng MOOE mula sa Philippine National Police? Meron. Meron, kami, meron pa rin. Meron kami ng MOOE and then may support pa rin kami ng gagaling sa local government. Ah, okay. Thank you very much. Yes, please. Um, sir, I just want to ask, okay, I just want to ask for clarification about the local ordinance in Quezon City. Ano po po talaga yung nakalagay ito sa guidelines na uh, the police can arrest those happening in that cover both men and women. Ano po yung nasa local ordinance talaga? I think ang, ang, ang nakalagay dun is half naked and then mayroong provisions ng penalties dun eh. And if I remember it, it correctly, pag first offense ka is a fine of 1,000 and three days community service. So walang kulong community service. And then the second offense would be one five and five days of community service. And then third offense is about 3,000 and about um, more than two weeks uh, community service. And the fourth offense, you would be fined 5,000 and you, you could be jailed for one year. So level-level yung penalty. Pag nakulong po ng isang taon, sino magpapakain doon? Ay, siyempre, gobyerno. Yung De, baka kasi mas masarap yung pagkain nyo. Detention yun, detention. Yun. Yun. detention. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yung community service, may merong, merong procedure ng pag-implement. May parang drill sergeant na from the local government na mag- Does it mean na kukunin na siya, dadalhin siya sa presinto at doon siya pagagawa ng community service? Ganun ba yun, sir? Uh, merong, may procedure nga. Depende nga kung ano yung, iya yeah, ano, pwedeng maglinis dyan, pwedeng, pwedeng, usually, ano eh, parang patig duty. So they have to go through the process before they can be Pag sa in terms of uh, half naked, parang fourth opens ka pa bago ka makulog. Uh, uh, so sabi ko kanina, wala kayong directive to go against uh, yung tambay. Um, wala naman talaga. Eh, because it's not a criminal offense. So given na yun. Sir, can I also ano, uh, ask, uh, uh, ask uh, the uh, update on the case of yung denial yung dalawang Oh, oh, na file ng kaso nun under Article 248 murder and then awaiting final uh, disposition ng city prosecutor. So meron po, po ba kayong nahanap na ito um, possible suspects aside from the... Ongoing pa yung ating investigation kasi nga sabi ko nung una pa, ikuyog eh, yun eh. Pwede ba namang kuyog, dalawa lang. Kasi nung binubugbog siya, may tumatayo. May tumatayo para makoberan, hindi makita ng pulis. And then majority nung ng criminal gang within that uh, custodial facility is Sputnik. 
So tight lip yung iba ron. So but we're looking ways and means kung sino pa tong yung humawak sa paa, hinawakan sa ulo, but the yung yung deadly blow was given by those two. So wala pang progress sir uh, from um, last Friday up to now. Wala pang additional suspect, do you mean? Wala pa, wala pa. But you're looking at how many continuous pa. Mga ilan sir ang posible aside from the We just play several jandos. Kasi yung demanda, the two of them, plus several jandos. So anybody that will be identified later, can be, we can amend and we can file a case against them. Okay. More questions from our colleagues? Yes, please. Sir, doon po sa uh, pag-rescue ng mga uh, minors, uh, ano sir yung pwede 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 maitulong ng mga magulang? And at what point or saan punto po pwede pwede yung magulang na mismo ang makulong dahil sa kanilang mga Sa Keso City, I can remember na y yun nga, nung pag na na namin children, ang pinaila na namin kaso yung magulang for negligence kasi nagiging children at risk in the street sila. Pag naman sa dami naming na rescue uh, chinalenge ko rin yung aking mga PCR, maybe these people should also be given yung, yung ating mga affluent family, yung mga well-meaning, baka pwede silang mag-adopt a child, yung street children, for a day or uh, uh, maitay up ko sa mga eskwelahan so that this this young young children na nasa estate makita rin nila nung ano ba nangyayari pag nag-aral kung nakatapos ka mag-aral so somewhere ma-build up yung hope nila to aspire to make themselves better so from the from the community relation point of view yun ang ginagawa namin from the investigation side of view is uh, pinapayla namin kaso yung parents na for negligence and then doon naman sa ano Inaano namin, tinaturn namin namin sa DSWD for processing, gano'n. Okay, follow up. Sir, ano po yung pwedeng may tulong ng mga magulang sa ino? Yung may tutulong ng magulang is, ano eh, yung controlling yung bata. Dapat paggabi wala na, nasa bahay na yun, natutulog. Sometimes, 3 years, 4 years old, 7 years old, nasa kalsada pa, nag... Sasayaw-sayaw, kaya pag minsan, pag uh, ano, vehicular accident, natatamaan pa, nasasagasaan, patay. So ang ma-appeal ko lang sa mga gulang, is hanapin natin yung mga anak natin pag uh, dumilim na, ilagay na natin sa bahay, dapat yan nag-aaral or kumakain or matutulog na. So karaniwan ang nare-rescue namin, eh, yung nanay nasa sugalan o kung saan. Actually, kahit first offense, pwede na agad i-demanda yung ano eh. Tinest case namin yun eh. Tinest case namin sa Quezon City, tapos ang naging uh, ano, fine ng uh, 2,000. Tapos ayun, nagdobli-dobli na naman yung aming kulungan. Teka muna, preno mo nga muna tayo. Tignan natin kung paano mas maganda pang gawin dito. So it's between that. Either i-rescue mo or either pailan mo yung kaso ng magulang. But then again, ang impact nando sa ating congested jail pag hindi nakabayad ng fine. We have a question from... Yes, please. Eh, liwanagin ko yung tambay, hindi naman namin hinuhuli kasi hindi naman crime yon So, kung sakaling may, ano, uh, kasi ang definition ng arrest, once you restrict the liberty of a person, it's an arrest already. So, yung tambay per se, na wala namang ginagawang crime, hindi namin dinadala yun. Uh, kaya lang na nata-term na tambay, what we're doing is enforcement of local ordinances pertaining to discipline. Eh, yun talaga, may violation. As long na masatisfy yung element ng crime, arestado sila, binabasa ng Miranda Rights. Doon sa minor, I would like to clarify, hindi namin inaaresto minor. Ang tawag doon, rescue. Dinadala namin sa police station para alamin saan sa ka nakatira, sino magulang mo, bakit nasa kapalsada ka pa. So, pinaprocess natin yun through the local government and the DSWD. Ganun po. Eh, yun lang naman, uh, yun nga, dapat palakasin natin yung institusyon ng pamilya. So dapat, kung nag-anak tayo, we must be responsible enough na pag-aralin yan. Pag uh, gabi na, nasa bahay na yan, uh, kailangan yan. Uh, there are so many activities that can be done 
So dapat lang eh, alam natin kung nasan yung uh, mga ating uh, anak. So, on the part of the Quezon City, we're strengthening our sports program so that somehow nag ano kami ng mga bata. We have a sports clinic for Taekwondo para mag-ano uh, mag, uh, mag, uh, mag, sila yung sa sports. So marami naman pwedeng gawin. But basically, very simple lang. Dapat pag dumilim na, yung anak natin nasa bahay na. So pag yung anak nyo wala pa sa bahay, dumilim na, yung pulis na maghahatid ng anak nyo papunta sa inyo. Pag gabi-gabi namin ginawa yan, siguro mga pat pangatlong gabi, kayo na ididimanda namin mga magulang for negligence. Isabi ko nga, hindi naman na may ina-aresto yung tambay. Bakit? Paano magkakaroon ng tanggihan? Kasi hindi naman, hindi, it's not a crime to loiter. Ang sinasabi namin, pag binayulate mo yung city ordinance, palakad-lakad ka ng kahubad in Quezon City, you will be arrested. Pag may dala kang panaksak, you will be arrested. Uminom ka sa kalasada, you will be arrested. Because that is the law. We do not arrest tambay for the... For the heck of it. For the ninth time, we do not. It's not a crime. Maglakat ka jan, mag mag ano ka jan, gloiter ka jan. Ula ka naman ginagaw. Hindi ka namin arresto eh. Subo ka mo hubad niyong t-shirt mo. You will be arrested. Meron ng isang sabi eh, bawal ika yung hubad, eh yung hubo. Eh hubad nga inuulit. Di pa ko uulitin din po yan. Opo. Nang We call it enforcement of city ordinances or municipal ordinances. And I call it enforcement of discipline crimes. Okay. Yes, please. Meron po kasi mga na-interview ng magulang na they would prefer that yung mga kids nila is magpunta muna sa barangay at hindi sa police for processing. Kasi mas traumatizing daw po sa police. So they would rather na mag-process sa barangay. Paano po ba yung coordination ng police at NG? Pwede naman yung ginagawa rin naman namin yun eh. Kaso nga, uh, ang train personnel na nag-handle ng minor is yung aming Women Children Protection Section or DES. Eh yun ay nandun sa aming police station. Ngayon, pag may fully trained din naman sa barangay, kasi delikado pag-handle ng minor sa amin eh. Pwede kang ma-asunto, pwede kang ma-dismiss dyan eh. Sa, uh, sa kapulisan. So talagang uh, we, in, in, we are not taking it lightly. Kaya ang nagtitreat ng minors is yung trained lang. Hindi lahat ng pulis pwedeng mag-handle ng minors. Lalo na kung babae o lalaki. Uh, especially pag babae. Kailangan women's pulis namin mag-handle dyan pag minor. Kaya, yung, kaya madalas na pupunta sa istasyon. Pero kung at the local government training may certified sila mag-handle ng minor, Pwede rin namin, tineturn over din namin sa, ano, inahayaan na namin at barangay level. Sir, clarification lang. When you say palakad-lakad, yun kasi yung main contention doon. How do you cla how do you classify a person na palakad-lakad? Halimbawa, naghihintay ng jeep, nag-aabang ng tricycle, may susunduin. May mga ganun, sir, na, of course, when you live in an urban community that's really congested, where transportation drop-offs are not defined, um, you know, so, That, that is always the good thing. Like we see it, the reports of complaints are really because um, they're rounded up and without really specific clarity dun sa IRR nung arrest, sir. Like when you say, oh, palakad lakad ka dyan, but then the person says, oh, if the person says, well, sir, may susunduin lang po kasi ako or mag-aabang po ako ng gym. Do you let that person go or do you say, explain na lang sa, sa station? Kaya nga sabi ko, everyday we put our badge and career on the line. Eh. Kasi nasa discernment na ng police officer yan. Eh. That's the very person na pinoprotection na natin. Yung mga nagtatrabaho, yung galing sa call center, yung mga media na pauwi, uh, yung galing sa overtime, obviously, tapos o oh, yung papasok sa trabaho. That is the very essence of our operation. Na these people who are productive and doing their, their share in, in, in putting a building, a stronger community, yun yung aming objective, maproteksyonan sila. Bakit namin sila huhulihin? So pag yung polis ko nagkamaling, humuling ganyan, eh relieve agad yan okay. at maimbestigahan yan. Meron hong naglabas ng balita na may kumakain sa labas ng isang convenience store na sinabihan ng pulis na huwag kayong standby dyan. Eh, kumakain. Paano raw po yun? This is not hair splitting, pero we'd like to find out 
pag ikaw eh nasa isang business establishment like sabihin na natin 7-Eleven may kainan sa labas hindi naman siguro pwede i-consider na standby. Pero usually ay den ano eh naka-specify yung kainan eh. kasi sa 7-Eleven may table dun sa loob eh. Parang gusto niya lang kumain sa labas. So may uh, merong table sa labas. Oh, eh, hindi hindi mo pwedeng ano 'yon eh kasi designated eating area 'yon eh. So ako nga bigyan niyo lang sa akin yung pangalan at sabihin niyo yung tao at maiimbestigahan din natin 'yan. Very good. Mabuti po. Questions? Yes, please. Meron naman ako, but I have to get back on you on that because uh, I have to check. But on the average, for example, dyan sa Munoz, more or less between 10 to 15, I can recall, sa Balintawak, marami din dyan. May mga, may mga area sila sa Delta, may mga area sila na ini, in, talagang pinupuntahan nila. I guess, kaya sila nagpupunta ron is they, they gain some monetary... Uh, ano doon sa mga area na malakas siguro maglimus ang tao doon sa mga yan. So, gabi-gabi, nire-rescue pa rin natin. Would you be... Paano, yeah, sige, please. Sir, paano naman po sa yung mga, ano, yung mga batang hamog na, for example, na talagang... Alam naman, alam naman natin yung mga nababatunod sa sakyan. The same din po ba, sir, yung treatment natin doon sa mga batang... I cannot answer that question. If I answer that, I will be investigated eh. Kasi we do not call children batang hamog. It's about parang labeling. So we call them children at risk in the street. So yung mga children at risk in the street, eh yun nga, nire-rescue natin. Ganun pa rin. Na-turn over namin sa DSWD for processing. Mm -hmm. So medyo, uh, yun ang tawag namin, children at risk. Pagka tinawag ko yung tinawag mo, under investigation ako bukas. <laughs> okay. Pero uh, ang pagkakaalam ko, meron kayong crime clock na ginagawa at pagsusuri ng mga nagaganap. No? Uh, anong oras nagaganap yung mga krimen? Aling barangay ang top grocer sa krimen? Sa ang lugar sa barangay madalas maganap ang krimen o kapabayaan ng magulang sa kanilang mga anak? Yes, under din sa order ng aming chief PMP, which the Director General Oscar Albialde as relate to me by my regional director, police chief superintendent, Uh, Guillermo Lorenzo Tolentino Eliasar, meron kaming enhanced managing police operation. So yung crimes, pinag-uusapan ng mga commanders dito. Ang ini-establish dyan, tama po kayo, yung tinatawag na crime clock at saka crime-prone areas. And if my memory serves me right, nasa um, least, uh, least crime is between 2 to 10. Majority of the... Uh, no, 10 to 6. 10 p.m. to 6. Yan yung list. And then yung dalawang ship pa doon, yun ay yung parang 40% or 80% of the crime. So for example, pag-uusapan ng mga commander yan, bawa station commander 1, saan yung prevalence ng crime mo? And what time? So nire-adjust yung police tactics. Pinuot nilalagay doon yung mga mobile patrol, yung foot patrol, each time. Kaso pag anong nangyari, nag-concentrate kami dito sa isang area, sometimes yung crime talaga nangyayari. Natataboy mo lang. So pagligay namin dito, lilipat dito, lilipat na na namin dyan. So, that is the constant question of my commanders na lagi nilang sinasagot. Sa inyong crime clock, sa inyong uh, crime-prone areas. Okay. What about uh, alleged uh, hold-up incidents in small restaurants? Yun nga, nabiktima ako ng fake news dyan because merong robbery in one of the Japanese restaurants in Scout Tobias and then nagkaroon viral na five other restaurants were robbed also, which are all big tissues. So, yung... yung sa Isakaya na restaurant sa Iskaw Tobias is not actually a rest, uh, robbery in, in the restaurant because ang nabira doon, yung payroll ng mag-asawa, it's actually a payroll robbery. The crime only happened nung masundan sila doon sa loob ng restaurant. So, but then again, uh, uh, we increase our operation in that area and I think uh, not more than a week na, na inkwentro yung tao natin dyan. May nakawa na famous kitchenette at dalawa na tayo na riding in tandem in that area. Mm -hmm. And so far, wala na incident ngayon dyan. Meron ba kayong pagsusuri doon sa mga nahuhuli ninyo sa checkpoints na nakamotorsiklo? Meron ba talagang criminal elements na nasasala sa inyong checkpoints? Maraming nahuhuli sa checkpoint, not only motorcycle, uh, on onboard motorcycle. Meron sometimes uh, sa kotse rin. Uh, just a few nights ago, may nakuhanan ng 145, 25 grams ng shabu, apat sila. 
and uh, 40,000 cash. So you would imagine na uh, ito kagagaling lang nag-deliver siguro. And then uh, about the motors uh, riding suspect is because in uh, Metro Manila talagang highly ano to eh. Uh, it's 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 stupid for them to use four wheel vehicle kaya ang ginagamit nila mot motorsiklo mm -hmm. kahit na robbery yan kahit na theft yan kahit na anong ginawa niyan the fastest way of get away na ginagamit is uh, happen to be the motorcycle oh, okay hindi naman pwede ipagbawal yung motorsiklo no okay <laughs> 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 hindi mo bawalan yan pag uh, more than uh, two na ang sakay kasi dapat dalawa lang pag tatlo pwede nang bawalan ah oh, okay Yung mga barangay na pinaka-crime prone, uh, aside from Balintawak, yung narito sa may barangay Pinyahan, ito yung mm -hmm. depressed area. Mm -hmm. ha how is it? Eh, yun nga. Eh, ang, ang mga barangay naman is uh, ina-address natin niya. May focus police tayo sa barangay. Meron din tayong police sa barangay. And then nag-join patrol tayo. Ina-organize natin yung... Because the police is community and the community is the police. So even may mga barangay na success story din tayo na zero na ang crime sa area nila. Inuunti-unti natin ang Quezon City, madrug free. Ngayon nga ang ina-award din namin sa district yung safer, ang tinawag namin safer community. Pag yung barangay na yun, walang nangyaring crime, ina-award din namin yung barangay chairman at saka yung dedicated police na naka-assign doon. Yeah. Wala na ho yung mga balita na nababangketa yung mga nahuhuli. Like pag may nahuling shabu, nare-recycle, wala nang ganun. So far sa sa short stint ko sa Quezon City, wala naman. Okay, very well. Okay. Yes. Um, it's a non-government organization it's been uh, in existence for 30 years. 32 years. Um, meron ba yung with local government, uh, at uh, mainly campaign, ano kami, center kami ng mga member organizations namin. Yung mga member organizations namin, which um, na may mga direct services for children, may mga bahagi sila ng mga regional council for the protection of children. No? So meron tayo sa Davao, yung isang member natin doon, member sila ng um, city council, kaugnay sa bata. So naging part sila, hindi lang doon sa usapin ng rescue, kundi doon mismo sa pagbubuo ng mga programs. No, kaya may mga coordination din tayo. Tapos, syempre, from time to time, pinapadalan na nila sa atin yung updates. O kaya, kapag may mga cases tayo na natatanggap kaugnay ng mga violations, nag nagre-rescue rin yung saling lahi. Um, kaugnay kung particular, kung dito sa Quezon City, last 2016, nagkaroon kami ng rescue dun sa dalawang minor na um, nahuli. Tapos, may alleged torture no tayo natanggap. So, Anong comprehensive program? Anong update? Um, may pakikipag-ugnayan tayo sa actually sa nilahi na may pakikipag-ugnayan tayo sa juvenile justice just juvenile justice for the welfare of children yun um welfare council uh, may yung sa kaugnay ng pagbubuo ng program isa tayo dun sa nagtutulak na maitaas yung budget nila kaya ngayon yung darating na pagbukas ng kongreso isa sa isisinusulong natin yung pagtaas ng budget ng JJWC para ma-implement nila fully yung art RA9344. Kaugnay yan, una, yung pagtatayo ng mga bahay pag-asa. Pangalawa, yung pagbubuo ng program. Dagdag na mga staff at facility para sa kanila. So, yun yung mga ilan sa binabanggit nating comprehensive program. At kung sa bahagi ng mga magulang, kung babanggitin ko lang, maliban doon sa pagsasampa ng mga kaso, kasi may mga cases naman talaga na may dinglek, no sa bahagi ng parents. Isa rin sa mga katulong, maliban doon sa pagsampa ng kaso, pagtulong din sa kanila para maiangat yung antas kung paano sila um, um, bilang magulang, no, yung responsible parenting, na magiging bahagi ng comprehensive program. No, maliban pa yan doon sa um, dapat may provision din ng livelihood kung um, poverty-related yung, yung mga cases na um, kinasangkutan na ng kanilang anak. So, yun yung mga um, sinasabi natin na i-implement ng government yung mga programs kaugnay nung um, response dun sa jubin, um, children in conflict with the law. Okay. So, yeah, follow up. Uh, attorney, we have a question for you. Morning, good morning. Sir, can you just expound further kung ano po yung mga possible negative effects kung ang mga arresting baka ay sa presinto at ang dinadala? And would you agree na dapat ay sa barangay mo na nasa setel bago kapatid sa presinto? There are two uh, phases to that answer. No? First is what 
chief superintendent said, yun na yung reality. It's a given that when they are rescued, they are brought to the station. Kasi, we don't have facilities to bring them in. They are a special situation. Eh? Kasi minor sila, they're vulnerable, uh, yung, yung exp they, they are vulnerable to be traumatized with, uh, with the experience. So, dapat sana, ideally, ito yung second phase ng answer ko, ideally, they should be brought into a special facility dedicated for minors. But the problem is, hindi, wala tayong ganun eh. Uh, the, the police, they, they work with what they have. And uh, I don't want to criticize them for doing that. In fact, they're doing their best to, to alleviate the situation. Ho, sana, sana, local government officials are mindful of that, that they build facilities themselves. So instead na barangay hall lang, they should be build youth halls for the youth specifically. Maybe during the day, it can be used by those who, who are uh, not at risk. Doon sila maglalaro, doon sila... Uh, Mag, uh, magsasaya. And then at night, it can be used as a, a, a sort of a holding facility for those minors at risk. Doon sila ipoprocess. Kasi at least yung aura ng place na yun is, is uh, youthful. So, uh, it can be traumatizing for the youth. But, uh, but then again, that is the reality we are all facing. Okay. Sir. Yes, please. So yung kaugnay din ng ano, um, yun nga, may yung kung sa implementing body naman ng kaugnay ng um, RA, RA 9344, kabahagi rin naman yung barangay dyan, no? pwede rin naman sila mag-process. Pero kung yung bata ay may mabigat na um, nagawang kasalanan o may, uh, yun nga, nag-commit siya ng isang krimen, um, automatically inaano yan sa police, no? Tapos, pero yung custody ng bata dapat ibigay sa DSWD. Pero nagbabari pa rin yun, no? Um, kung simpleng violation lang sa curfew hours, pwede talaga yung automatically i-release sa magulang, no? Kung nandyan yung magulang o may guardian. Para may, yung, kasi yung con confinement sa mga facilities ng DSWD, hindi rin, sa bahagi bilang child rights advocates, hindi rin namin fully sinasuggest. Kasi yung um, pagtulong uh, doon sa bata, pwede rin namang community-based, no? No, pwede maglunsad ng counseling session, panapanahong bumababa yung um, DSWD para matulungan yung bata at okay. kanyang pamilya. Thank you. Would you care to share with us your statistics? Yes, yes. Uh, yung tanong nga kanina about the statistics do sa enforcement na ordinansa. For the period June 13 uh, to 5 a.m. June 26, ito yung implementation ng Quezon City Police District. Uh, drinking on public places in streets, 418. Smoking ban, 686. Half naked in public place, 479. Minors violating curfew hour, 679. Uh, part, uh, specific particular ordinance, 795. For a total of 3,057. Out of this, 1,835 were warned. Winner ningan lang, so na release yan. Number of person fined, 35. Number of person charged, 1,187. So roughly about 32%. For a total of 3,057. So ganyan yung takbo ng aming enforcement sa uh, ordinance. Uh, parang ganito yung uh, average niya. Uh, so, about uh, more than 50% we na warning lang. Okay. Ah, yung children, minors. Uh, sinabi ko kanina. Minors violating curfew hours. 6.79. Hindi, 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 hindi sinasampahan ng kaso, minor. Bahagi sila siguro doon sa warrant. Warrant, okay. Mm. Doon sa kinasuhan nyo, mm. would you be able to monitor the progress of the case? Nasa prosecutor's office ba yan? O nasa... No, nasa yung iba nasa prosecutor's. That's why we are coordinating with the prosecutor na ibalik yung special yung night court dati ah. kasi may night court eh immediately madidesisyon ang kung fine fine kung jail ah. jail ganun okay so ngayon nagco-coordinate kami sa Quezon City prosecutor sa DOJ na ibalik yung night court para mas mabilis yung ating uh, processing ng do sa dito sa mga ordinansa yeah okay please Responsibility of parents 
stuff kasi iba na, kulong, iba, ulit-ulit din na lumalabas. Have you raised this concern with the DSWD? Like, meron bang coordination with the DSWD regarding this? Kasi since dapat sila din yung, kumaga meron din sila ang mga hand in this. Actually, pag-rescue namin, kasama namin yung DSWD. And then, uh, I'd like to clarify, hindi kami nahihirapan. Talagang trabaho namin itong ginagawa. But on the point na kung na-raise namin yung issue sa DSWD, while we implement the rescue, kasama na namin agad sila. Kasama rin yung aking mga Women Children Protection Desk uh, Investigators. But uh, we have to clarify, yung social workers na kasama nyo, yun yung devolved sa local government. Yes, yun, sa local government. Uh, okay. Mabuti na yung maliwanag. Yes, please. I have a question. What's the comparison between crimes committed by individuals compared to organized crime, like smuggling, human trafficking? What's the level between individuals and organized crime? So when we, because we have to define the issue first. We call it criminal gangs if it is two or more. We call it organized crime when the level of uh, influence goes up to national level. They can influence senators, congressmen, they can influence the judges, the court and everything. So I think we have about less than five uh, organized crime in the Philippines, but we have a lot of criminal gangs. Criminal gangs when uh, two or more criminals banded together, they're considered uh, criminal gangs. So in, in Quezon City, uh, if we arrest two or more, they're considered criminal gangs. But we have not arrested a member of an organized crime. Thank you. More questions? Okay, let's look forward. Anong dapat gawin? Anong dapat asahan para sa ating mga kabataan? Um, yung mga ordinansa, na, nararapat lang naman niya na ipatupad ng ating estado in term um, for, the, for us to ensure yung welfare ng ating mga bata. Pero in a way na dapat um, magbibigay respeto, i-consider yung best interest ng children natin. No? So sa bahagi ng, ng salinlahi, patuloy yung aming pagtutulak sa government na magbuo ng comprehensive program na tunay na magsasagot o mag address dun sa mga issues why children are getting involved into criminality. And at the same time, fully implement the um, RA 9344. Um, bahagi dyan yung pagtatayo ng mga bahay, pag-asa, facility, pagtataas ng kapasidad ng ating law enforcement agencies in terms of implementing the law. Sa isang banda, um, abutin yung mga magulang um, maging bahagi rin no, yung state dun sa paggabay sa mga magulang, paano sila magiging mabuting magulang sa kanilang mga anak. Ah, okay. May pahabol dito. Dun ho ba sa kampanya ninyo, laban dun sa mga vagrants, loiterers, at iba pa, meron bang significant reduction in crime incidents? Meron po. Uh, pero just to clarify po, yung vagrants, di, di criminalized na po yan. Eh. So, other ordinances po yung implement namin. And then, uh, marami rin po kami yung positive feedback na sinasabi na nalinis na yung kanilang party ng kalsada. At marami rin naman po tumatawag, magkanda kayo ng Operation Tambay dito. Wala ko kaming Operation Against Tambay. Enforcement of uh, city ordinances ang aming kinakandak po. So kung may nag-iingay dyan, may nag-iingay sa kalsada, re responde po kami. Very good. Anong dapat gawin para matiyak na yung karapatan ng lahat ay makilala? So, I, first of all, I echo my friends' uh, advocations. No? Uh, what I'd like to add that as voters lapit na election sa 2019, we have to look towards uh, our candidates uh, how will they implement youth building, uh, youth promoting the youth as nation builders. We have to ask them what are your programs? What are your plans? Specifically local officials because this is a primary responsibility of the local government. This is what is, uh, this is what the law mandates. Mm -hmm. So, para sa akin, when we uh, try to evaluate our local uh, politicians, let's put that number one. What are you going to do for our youth? Very well. Can I close? Okay. For the policemen, I think we are in agreement. We, we are in agreement in as much as the policemen, our marching order is protect the youth of my land. That's what we are doing. That's why we are engaging the uh, war on drugs. That's why we are intensifying our anti-criminality in terms of hate focus crime. That's why we are uh, conducting enforcement of uh, uh, 
discipline crimes or enforcement of uh, city ordinances. On the part of the policemen, sasabihin ko sa aking mga station commander, kahit na bat ang batikos ay kaliwat kanan, yan ang mandato natin. Huwag kayong panghinaang loob, patuloy nyo implement ang batas, at yung pag-implement natin ng batas ay walang kulay. It is blind. Mayaman o mahirap, basta na satisfy yung elemento ng krimen, arestuhin. Kahit may problema tayo sa congestion, arestuhin. We will try to solve the problem with the help of the community. Marami naman tumutulong po sa amin. Maraming nagbo-volunteer na mga psychologists, psychiatrists, for example. Kasi pag nahuli na namin yung sa illegal drugs, parang seemingly tapos na yung sa police. Eh. Ba't hindi natatapos doon? Meron, sa Quezon City, meron ho tayong comprehensive na ano rito, 15 modules na community-based rehabilitation program. Mm -hmm. Kaya po, nakasupervise pa rin po kami doon. Naka-align pa rin kami doon. So, sa ang masasabi ko lang, ang itong problema na to is complicated. Tama si attorney na hindi lang kami ang makakasolve dito. Pagtulong-tulungan din natin. Kasama rin, tama rin itong kaibigan natin na na nagsasabi, nagre-raise ng mga issue para ma-wake up yung police. Baka nga meron nagiging abuses na mm. nakikreate. Pero ang pakiusap lang namin, uh, wag nating erase to sa media lang. Let's document it. Pumunta tayo sa police station so that we can file the necessary charges kung sino. Okay. Uh, yan po. Very well. Siguro ang pinakamagandang assignment po ng pulisya at ng pamahalaan in general, eh, samantalang marirehab natin yung mga kailangang marihab, eh, ang pinakamaganda nito eh, matuntun sa nagmumula yung droga na pinamamahagi sa ating mga slum areas at kahit dun sa mga sikat na mga night spots. No? So siguro isang magandang project yan. While we can get rid of uh, people dispensing the drugs, let's find the source. Tama po kaya yan. Magandang, uh, magandang solusyon. Yan naman po nangyayari. Kami sa territorial police po kami. Kaya na-engage namin is street level. Pero pag naka-engage na kami ng medyo mataas-taas na target, inaakyat na po namin sa specialized unit yan. Kaya meron po tayong drug enforcement group sa PNP at meron tayong PDEA. Basta high value target na tumaas na po yan, umaakyat na rin po ang unit na mag address uh, Very good. Uh, next week, the topic is about drugs. So please be with us on our second anniversary. I'd like to thank uh, Chief Superintendent Zulito Chidoris Cabell Jr., si Attorney Michael Henry uh, Lucinco, at si Mr. Yuli Rico Bonganay na nakasama natin ngayong araw na ito. God bless us all. Have a nice day. Until next week. Thank you.